Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. A logical and uh, systematic approach to solving organic chemistry problems for CSIR net. In the module 5, organic reactive intermediates, generation stability and reactivity of carbocations will be seen. I am Dr. Balaji, currently working as Associate Professor in the School of Biotechnology at Jawaharlal Nehru University. This project is sponsored by DTH Swayambrava, MHRD, New Delhi. So, what we are going to learn in this session is we are going to study about the generation stability and reactivity of carbocations. These questions are basically asked in many uh, CSAR net examinations over a period of several years. So, we will be looking at uh, mainly focusing on carbocations. So, the first problem is the major product formed in the reaction given below is we are given a alkene and a carboxylic acid that means alpha beta unsaturated carbox we are given an alkene and a carboxylic acid. So, this undergoes reaction with iodine and potassium iodide followed by reaction with sodium carbonate and it gives some product. So, we are going to find out what is the product that will be formed in this particular reaction. So, four answers are given here. So, this is a multiple choice question and we have to find out which is the correct product that will be formed in this particular reaction. So, let us look at uh, how the reaction actually proceeds. So, the first step is basically the formation because this is a electrophilic uh, addition reaction. We have an alkene and here we are going to add iodine to that. So, I plus is the one which is going to add in this first step. So, we are going to get a cyclic iodonium ion that will be formed in the first step because this is a electrophilic addition reaction. So, once the electrophilic uh, reaction happens, the next step is basically reaction with Na2CO3 that is a base is used in this reaction. So, the base abstract the most acidic proton, this uh, carboxylic acid proton is the most acidic proton. So, this will be abstracted by the sodium carbonate and we end up with the anion, the carboxylate anion will be generated. So, once the carboxylate anion is generated that on charge reversal leads to attack this cyclic iodinium ion. So, that is how the negative charge on the oxygen is shifted between this carbon and the oxygen bond and this double bonded uh, electrons are attacking this one. So, this can also be written in a two steps. So, here it is written in a combined step. So, what happens is this oxygen actually gets the charge when the charge reversal from this carboxylate anion happens, the oxygen gets the negative charge and this negative charge is the one that attacks this particular carbo uh, carbon center. So, then the opening of this iodinium ion takes place. So, in other words, we end up with the oxygen attacking this particular carbon atom and then iodine goes with the adjacent carbon. So, that is how in this particular case, we are going to get a cis addition, the ring junction here is a cis 1 because both the hydrogens are pointing away from the observer and in this particular uh, case as we can see, the product formed is basically the answer A. So, let us move on to the next problem. So, in this particular case, uh, we are going to see the major product formed in the reaction given below is this is very similar to the previous one. The starting material is the same starting material, but the only difference is the reagents what that are used are little bit different. So, here we have NBS that is N bromo succinimide and in the second step we have a very strong base potassium tertiary butoxide. So, in the previous case we had used iodine potassium iodide system and a milder base sodium carbonate we have used and in this case we are going to do a N bromo succinimide addition followed by a reaction with a strong base and this going to give a different type of product. So, what happens basically is if you look at the previous case and this case, we actually have a alkene that is present in the previous, uh, in the previous case we have a halogen atom iodine present in this particular carbon and this is exactly the same product that we got. And, uh, in this case, we have an alkene that is formed. So, we have a iodine here. So, this iodine can lose a 
uh, can be lost as a leaving group because of the presence of a strong base. So, we end up with the elimination reaction and that will lead to an alkene product. So, the first two products may not be the right one uh, in this particular case also. So, that can be ruled out. So, we have to figure it out between C and D what is going to be our final product. So, if you look at the stepwise uh, approach for this particular problem solving case, the first step uh, similar to the previous one, we are going to get a bromonium ion addition. So, this is again nothing but a electrophilic addition reaction that is happening. Uh, n bromosuccinamide is the brominating agent that is used in this case. And the second step is uh, similar to the previous one, generation of the carbon ion, uh, uh, carboxylate anion. So, the sodium tertiary butoxide abstract this acidic proton and we end up with the carboxylate anion. This oxygen attacks this carbon and uh, the ring opening actually takes place. We have a positive charge on this bromine. So, that leads to the, this particular intermediate will be formed and since we are using a potassium tertiary butoxide which is a very strong base, this abstracts the second acidic uh, hydrogen atom. So, when it attracts the uh, hydrogen atom, so this bond moves here and the bromine is lost as a Br minus ion and the base abstract this hydrogen atom. So, this is the elimination reaction, this is nothing but the E2 elimination that is happening and we already know for E2 elimination anti periplanarity is required. So, these hydrogen and the bromine are in the axial orientation. So, that leads to the very facile elimination and we end up with the alkene product. So, this is very similar to the previous case, both the hydrogen atoms are in the cis orientation and only the extra thing is an alkene is formed. So, in this particular case as we have seen in the first uh, example also, the answer is C with an additional alkene that is a double bond. Let us move on to the third problem which is also very similar to the previous case. Here also we have an alkene bond, we also have a carboxylic acid unit. So, when we have these two systems then obviously our uh, expected answer is going to be the addition of iodine and the formation of the cyclic system. So, this is in this particular case they even gave the product. Now, what the question they are asking is how the reaction actually proceeds, what is the intermediate that is involved in this particular case. So, if you look at the reagent, this is iodine and potassium iodide, same reagent which is used in the first example and the sodium carbonate is also used, that is also used in the first example and we end up with the iodolactone. This is a lactone uh, derivative and this is iodine. So, the iodolactone is a product that is formed, that is also given here, but uh, the question asked is how the reaction actually proceeds. So, here we have various intermediates, one is the cyclic iodinium intermediate, another one is also a cyclic iodinium intermediate. In the third one we have a carbocation, fourth one we have a carbocation. So, we have four different uh, intermediates, two having a uh, cyclic iodinium as the intermediate, two having carbocation as the intermediate. So, these are all the four uh, intermediates uh, through which the reaction actually proceeds that is what is given. So, we have to find it out which one is the actual uh, one. So, uh, if you look at the, the first step as you know, this is the nothing but the electrophilic addition of the iodine. So, that cyclic iodinium iodine uh, ion will be formed and the carboxylate anion uh, attacks this particular carbon and then we end uh, the uh, ring opens up. So, the opening up of the ring is the most crucial one. So, in this particular case, we are going to have the iodine which is present because if you look at the final product, the iodine is actually pointing towards the observer. So, the attack actually has to happen from the bottom side. So, unless the attack happens from the bottom side, the opening up of uh, this iodinium ion, cyclic iodinium ion will not give the iodine which is present in the uh, pointing towards the observer or the upside. So, the attack happens from the bottom, then that is the only thing that is possible. If you look at uh, our uh, one of the intermediate, see in this particular case, the B cannot be the product because the iodine is actually pointing downwards. So, when the iodine, this iodinium ion is pointing downwards and the carboxylic 
a carboxylate anion is also in the same side. So, this cannot attack because both are in the same orientation or the cis orientation. So, the attack can never take place. So, in this particular case, it is actually trans orientation. The iodinium ion is actually pointing upwards and the carboxylic uh, anion is pointing downwards. In other words, it is the anti addition that is what is happening or the ring opening is the trans addition is happening. So, that is the reason when uh, the carboxylate anion attacks from the bottom, the ring has to open up to the top. So, that is the reason the final product, because the final product has the iodine at the top. So, this ex explains why A is the right intermediate and not B. So, that we can easily confirm through what is the final product that is formed. So, let us move on to the next problem. So, in this particular case, uh, the major product formed in the following reaction is. So, we have an alkene bond and we are going to treat it with bromine and methanol. So, there are four different products that can be formed. The one is the dibromo derivative, another one is the bromine and the methoxy are introduced. And when the bromine and methoxy are introduced, we have three different combinations. Here it is the trans product, here this is a cis product and the last one is again a trans product. The only difference is the methoxy group is added which is adjacent to the oxygen that is in one product. In the second trans product, the methoxy group is far away from the oxygen that, uh, that is present in this system. So, this is the only difference. Other than that, we have three products where methoxy and bromine are added. So, let us look at uh, how the reaction actually proceeds. So, this again is the electrophilic addition, bromine is added as a bromonium ion. So, here the major difference between the previous case and this case is we have a electronegative atom which is having lone pair of electrons. So, this lone pair of electron actually facilitates the ring opening of this uh, particular case. So, in other words, we end up with the basically a carbocation or uh, similar to that is formed here and uh, this is uh, having a double bond with oxygen nearby. So, the oxygen actually keeps the positive charge and we have a double bond that is formed here and uh, this carbon is actually uh, less electronegative than oxygen. So, the oxygen will not have or oxygen does not want to have the positive charge on itself. So, this carbon is going to be much more electrophilic in nature. So, that is the reason the solvent uh, methanol that uh, lone pair of oxygen from the oxygen methoxy unit attacks this electrophilic carbon atom and we end up with a product where uh, the methoxy group is introduced uh, in close uh, proximity to the oxygen unit. So, that is how the addition actually takes place. And we finally end up the answer is going to be uh, B because when the bromine is actually opening up at that time what happens is the bromine is very bulky uh, unit. So, that is the reason the methoxy group cannot attack from the same side. So, it can because uh, the steric repulsion between the bulky bromine and the methoxy are going to be very huge. So, that is the reason it is again a anti addition or a trans addition in which bromine is uh, pointing upwards and the methoxy group is attacking from the bottom. So, that is the most uh, convenient place where the steric repulsion is the minimum most. So, that is the reason these two groups are present in the trans orientation. Uh, we can move on to the next uh, problem. So, here uh, the major product formed in the following reaction. So, here a reaction is given where the OTS group is lost or replaced by the acetate unit. So, this is the reaction that is happening. So, the OTS uh, compound is treated with acetic acid. We end up with a different type of uh, product. In the first case, we are going to get the acetate replacing the OTS. In the second two case, we are actually getting alkene. So, that is a elimination reaction or a substitution reaction that is what is actually happening. So, this is the nucleophile OAC is the nucleophile that is attacking. So, it is nothing but the nucleophilic substitution reaction that is occurring on this particular carbon atom. So, we have to find it out what is the product that will be formed in this particular case. 
So, let us look at what is the product that will be formed. As we mentioned, OTS is a very good uh, leaving group and uh, this is lost very effective, very easily that leads to the carbocation. So, this is nothing but the SN1 type mechanism. In the first step, a carbocation is formed on this particular carbon. Now, the major difference comes into this picture is the presence of a phenyl ring or the electron rich aromatic system which is adjacent to the carbocation. So, when the OTS group is lost, we are going to get a carbocation and this carbocation is electron deficient, the phenyl group is uh, electron rich. So, it easily donates the uh, pi electron cloud to this particular carbocation and thereby it forms a cyclic uh, ion as shown here. There is a cyclic ion that is formed and the plus charge is now distributed on the aromatic system because aromatic system can easily stabilize a carbocation. So, that is the reason here the neighboring group participation is happening. So, due to the formation of uh, presence of this phenyl group on the adjacent carbon to the carbocation, we are going to get a neighboring group participation or anchimeric assistance that is happening in this particular reaction. So, once this cyclic uh, intermediate is formed as we have seen in the previous case also when the bromine attacks the the methoxy uh, unit attacks the bromonium ion in the previous case, the attack happens from the bottom side or it is the trans addition or the anti addition. Similar to that, here also the solvent acetate uh, attacks the carbocation from the bottom side because the top side is blocked by the presence of the bulky phenyl group. So, this again is the anti addition or the trans addition. So, in this particular case, the same place from where the OTS is lost, the acetate group is actually introduced. So, this happens due to the presence of the phenyl ring. So, the major uh, thing we have to remember in this particular case is the presence of a neighboring electron rich neighboring group actually changes how the reaction actually occur. Because when we talk about SN1 reaction, in the SN1 reaction, racemization is the only thing that can happen because we are going to get a planar carbocation. So, this is the most crucial thing that happens in the SN1 mechanism. So, when we have a planar, planar carbocation, the nucleophile can attack from the top or from the bottom or we can also say it can attack from the right or it can attack from the left. So, two equal side attack is possible when we have a planar carbocation. In that case, we are going to get a racemic product, we cannot get any other type of product. So, this is the normal standard SN1 mechanism. But when there is an anchimeric assistant, when there is a neighboring group participation, so what happens? An electron rich substitute ion which is present next or adjacent to the carbocation donates its electron to the electron deficient carbon. So, at that time, it forms a bond. So, that bond blocks one side. So, the nucleophile can only attack the carbon from the opposite side only. So, in other words, trans addition is the only thing that is possible. So, that is the reason in this particular case, we are actually getting a retention of configuration. So, that means, whatever the place where the OTS is present, in the same place, the acetate ion is actually added. So, the nucleophilic substitution leads to retention of configuration because of the presence of neighboring group. So, this is the one thing you have to remember all the time. Whenever these kind of tricky questions are asked in the examination, simply to see whether you can actually visualize what is the role that will be played by the neighboring atoms when a particular intermediate is involved. So, let us move on to the next problem. So, here there is a reaction that is given, we are going to find out what is the most stable product formed in the following reaction. A uh, tricyclic system is actually given, this is treated with ALCL3, ALCL3 is nothing but the Lewis acid. So, treatment of a system, cyclic system with the Lewis acid uh, in the presence of heat leads to some type of reaction. So, basically this is nothing but a rearrangement reaction, we are going to see what are all the different rearrangements that are possible in this particular case. So, we have A, B, C, D like uh, 
four different products. Again, they are uh, tricyclic systems that are shown here. We have to find out which one is the actual product that will be formed. So, this reaction is a very typical reaction and this is a textbook reaction where uh, the formation of adamantane, this reaction is used as a very, very important reaction. So, the starting material is nothing but the exo tricyclodecane. So, the initial step is nothing but the Lewis acid uh, abstraction uh, reaction. So, what we get is basically a carbocation is formed. So, once a carbocation is formed, various uh, shift of or rearrangement takes place. So, the most crucial one is the wagner mirwin rearrangement. So, this mag wagner mirwin rearrangement uh, completely changes the skeleton of the uh, cyclic system and this is also followed by various 1, 3 shift. So, here we have a 1, 3 shift. So, one hydrogen uh, moves from one place to another place leading to a different type of carbocation. So, that is why these are called rearrangement reactions. So, again another uh, wagner mirwin shift takes place. So, although this looks complicated, all are a very systematic and logical progression of the reaction actually proceeds. We have multiple 1, 3 shifts that leads to a little bit uh, rearrangement of the carbon skeleton from the starting material and finally, the addition of the proton, uh, addition of hydrogen leads, um, leads to the our final product which is the adamantane. So, this entire system is based on carbocation rearrangement only. So, that is the reason this is a very, very crucial reaction and uh, you can remember this very simply like uh, whenever exo tricyclodecane system and the Lewis acid is given, the final product is going to be adamantane. So, that is the only thing and uh, if you remember that this problem can be easily solved. So, this is a very good example of a non-classical carbocation because all classical carbocations are basically planar uh, systems and here also we have uh, bicyclic systems and uh, tricyclic systems are involved and in all the cases uh, what we are dealing is a 1, 3 shift is a very, very uh, different type of reaction. It is a rearrangement reaction and of course, we know carbocation can easily undergo rearrangement. Uh, we have seen 1, 2 shift, methyl shift, these things are seen in the normal case. So, this is a uh, very uh, different case where uh, wagner mirwin shift or the non-classical carbocation undergoes various rearrangement to give the final product. So, our answer is nothing but the adamantane is the final product. So, if we go on to the next one, what is the kinetic product that will be formed in the following reaction? We have a naphthol uh, as the starting material. So, the naphthol is treated with the sulfuric acid. So, when the naphthol is treated with sulfuric acid, a sulfonation reaction actually takes place. So, where the sulfonation will take place? Uh, these are all the different places where the sulfonation can actually take place. So, if it is uh, 2 naphthol, then in the position 1, the sulfonic acid group can be introduced or we can also have other places like if it is 1, 2, 3. So, the third position or in the fourth position or in the sixth position. So, these are all the different places where the sulfonic acid group is introduced. So, we have to find out what is the kinetic product that will be formed in this particular case. So, uh, we have to do a very, very simple reaction uh, before we even uh, try to find a solution for this problem. We have to keep one thing in mind, this reaction is a very, very different type of reaction. If you look at this particular unit alone, this unit is nothing but a enol. And what enol can do? Enol can undergo ketone. So, the keto enol tautomerism is a very, very important uh, reaction. So, this tautomerization reaction is the one which is going to decide what is the product that will be formed in this particular case. So, we have a enol in the first step. So, the enol can form a ketone. So, we have a carbanion that is present. Okay. So, this is one thing we will just look here and we have to also look at additional few things like I mean how many different uh, carbanions are possible 
and what are all the different stabilities that exist because when we are going to talk about either kinetic product or a thermodynamic product, if it is a thermodynamic product mostly we will focus on the stability of the compound and the kinetic product means activation energy. So, when we talk about activation energy, if the ketoenol tautomerism is very facile, so that means the reaction may happen very effectively, so that is the difference. So, here what we are talking about is ketoenol tautomers. Now, we have multiple bonds, so the anion can be formed in the benzylic position. So, this is one type of anion that can be formed and we can also form another type of anion, so which is little bit far from the other aromatic ring. So, now if you look at the first one and the second one, we have two possibilities of anions that are possible and we also have another third possibility which we can also call this like a para position. So, carbonyl and the anion or uh, let us say they are in the para position. So, we have three different types of anion that are possible in this particular system. The ketoenol tautomers are possible for the beta naphthol or the 2 naphthol. So, which one will be formed? So, the first and foremost one is if you look at all the three structures, the first structure has a aromatic ring because here we have the 6 pi electrons. In the second structure, we only have 4 pi electrons in one ring. Another ring also has a 6 pi electrons. Here we can say this is having 6 pi electrons and here if you look at uh, there are 6 pi electrons and uh, 2 uh, 4 pi electrons, but if you look at or compare all the three, this is having actually 3 double bonds which is exactly the requirement for aromatic pisces, uh, aromaticity concept. So, this ring is having aromatic system that means the starting material is having aromatic ring, the intermediate is also the ketoenol tautomer is also having the aromatic ring. So, the stability remains more or less same there is no disturbance, but if we look at the other cases one of the aromatic ring structure is completely destroyed in the rest of the two cases. So, that means the formation of these intermediates are going to be very less one. The second thing is we have a benzylic carbanion in the first system. So, whenever we have a benzylic carbanion that can actually get into resonance with the aromatic system. So, that means we have more resonance structures that are possible for this e, uh, ketone type tautom, uh, tautomer and that is more stable in other words more resonance structure leads to more stability. So, we can very clearly say the first one will be the ketone that will be formed in this particular ketoenol tautomer. So, this one can now undergo protonation of course, uh, for time being uh, do not worry about uh, when we are adding a proton then you will immediately say sir the proton has to be added to the negative charge why you are adding here. See if I am going to add to this negative charge the reaction may not proceed. So, for the reaction to proceed what we have to do is what is the most electronegative uh, system or the element to which the proton will be added not to the charge alone because here carbon is less electronegative than oxygen. So, the proton will obviously add to the oxygen only as the first step. So, that is the reason protonation because this reaction the sulfonation reaction is carried out in the presence of sulfuric acid that means plenty of H plus ions are present. So, they will add to the ketone oxygen because that is the most electronegative one and uh, then in the second step the actual sulfonation reaction which is the aromatic electro uh, nu electrophilic substitution reaction intermediate the sulfonic acid cation is the one which will be added. So, this adds to the negative charge now. So, we have a negative charge. So, this uh, sulfonic acid group adds to this carbon and uh, shift of uh, hydrogen atom takes place leading to the final product that will be formed. So, if you look at uh, this product is having the aromatic system and uh, sulfonic acid group is introduced on to the first carbon only. So, this is going to be the kinetic product that will be formed in this particular case. So, what is the driving force for this one? The formation of the enone that uh, keto, uh, ketone is the one which is having a benzylic uh, carbanion with the complete aromatic system. So, that is the driving force for this entire reaction. So, the uh, if we uh, look at what are all the reaction, the first step is the protonation of the uh, system happening and uh, the next step is the attack of the electrophile and then that leads to the loss of hydrogen atom because this is nothing but the shift of hydrogen atoms takes place and uh, 
this double bond is shifted towards the electropositive oxygen and we end up with the normal uh, that is the enol type derivative that is the sulfonation happens and we end up with the naphthol derivative. So, this is the kinetic product that will be formed in this particular reaction.